What's up, everybody? John Eric Paul here with my MMA news, and we're in the final days here of 2020. And uh, as everybody knows, this is the time of the year that awards start uh, being given out for the best of 2020. And I actually am talking to somebody today that's a winner of one of those awards. I'm talking to the 2020 Ring Girl of the Year. Ladies and gentlemen, let's bring in Miss Brittany Palmer here. Brittany, how are you? And congratulations on winning the award yet again. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing fine. Thanks for asking. So let's bring up, uh, let's start talking about this award just a little bit here. Like I said, you've won this a few times now. This is your third time, I believe. So what's this like to yet again win this honor? Um, you know, considering this year has just, it's really been such a wild one. It was kind of like, a, oh, well, that was cool. You know, just on top of this kind of gloomy year. Um, I thought that that was just really, uh, it was really great that everyone voted and um, I mean, I made a couple cracks at it because not really many ring girls worked this year. So <laughs> I'm not, I mean, but um, I, I thought it, it's very cool. And just to still be here with UFC and to be a part of this. And and uh, I love that they're still doing the MMA awards. You know, it's just, a, it's like a tradition. It's been going on for so long. So it's always an honor. Um, I, when I did my acceptance speech, I actually like dedicated it to everybody because really we've all just been fighters this year. And I really think that like the whole, you know, the whole of the MMA community, and we all really deserve this award because it's a, it's been a, it's been a year. Definitely has been a year, that's for sure. Um, and whenever you get this award too, is there something that like, like I understand an acceptance speech there, I'm sure with 2020, that must have, I'm assuming was virtual, but like, is there like a big like to do? Do you guys get to go out like nice dinner, shirts, ties, nice dresses, the whole nine yards? Or is this more just like a bragging rights thing that you get like a piece of paper in the mail? Um, you know, you, it's, it's kind of however you want it to be. Um, I did an acceptance speech. Um, I went into the studio, which was kind of cool. I got to get a little bit dressed up. I didn't go too crazy. Um, but you get a, you get a, a trophy. So I'll, this would be my third one, which is like this really cool guy fighting. And apparently the trophy is like 20 pounds. That's what they said. Um, so it's, it's just more of a, just a really, it's an honor. That's all. Definitely is, and uh, Brittany, if we could, let's go back to the beginning with this whole ring girl experience. Like, it, it's such a, it's a job that you, you kind of wonder, like, how does one exactly become a ring girl? So how did you, you know, get involved with this in the first place? Well, um, actually, you and I had touched base on this earlier. I was a professional dancer in Las Vegas, um, where I grew up. So I was dancing in big Vegas shows and being a part of, um, you know, modeling agencies and talent agencies. So in, when you're a part of so many, they have castings and auditions. So when I was about 19 years old, I went in for a WEC casting, um, which was the lighter weight class to UFC, the sister company. Um, there was an audition for Ring Girls and I was at the Hard Rock Hotel and in a little blue outfit and I walked in a circle and I got the job. <laughs> and I've just been there ever since, you know, I was a huge fan of UFC before I had gotten hired with them. So I think, you know, that speaks volumes as a part of being an employee with the company is to really love it. And I do love it. So here I am. And you've been doing a great job ever since. You're, it's like you're a staple to everybody, too. Everybody that watches the UFC knows who Brittany Palmer is. You're probably the most recognized ring girl of all time. And uh, I just was wondering, too, if you could explain the job a little bit. We get what you pretty much just said there, the part where, you know, you walk around with the the what number the round is above your head and everything, but yeah, th there's a little bit more to it. Obviously, there's travel involved, showing up early for weigh-ins and stuff like that. You know, it really is, and and I thank you for asking that question. I think it's really important. You know, the girls, including myself, and you know, we work really hard to continue to have to represent the UFC in such a positive way. You know, from what it takes to be in that outfit. <laughs> and be under those lights with, you know, to make our bodies look, you know, in tip top, uh, tip, tip top shape all year long. You know, there's no seasons with UFC. It's a 12 month season. So, you know, really, you know, taking care of ourselves, maintaining ourselves, representing the sport, you know, we, we use our social media to promote the sport and um, just have fun there not make it so, you know, we're just the cheerleaders where it's really important to bring personality and have that kind of flair because, you get these fighters and it's so incredible to see them in the cage and then backstage. And, and then if you're following the ring girls, you kind of see us having fun and we're frolicking around the ring and, you know, just bringing that feminine energy into a very masculine, like a masculine dominant sport. So, um, I, I, and you know, it's, it's easy. It's so easy because we love it so much, but it's also, you know, it really takes 
the commitment to showing up and, you know, showing up for yourself and the company. Now is Dana your guys' boss as well, or do you have somebody else that you, that you deal with as your boss? Dana is our boss. <laughs> that is, we have somebody else that will deal with our scheduling, but if it comes to anything that we need, whether it's like a day off or, well, yeah, um, anything, they always, we have to ask Dana. So Dana is the boss for everybody. Good to know. I was, I was yeah. wondering, I was always curious about that. Um, so uh, another thing too to the job that is pretty uh, fun and exciting, obviously you guys get to interact with the fighters a lot. Do you have any fighters that you've became very good friends with over the years just from doing this job? Um, I do. I've become very good friends. Let's see, Uriah Faber is a good friend of mine. I mean, we're from back in WBC days. Um, Conor McGregor and uh, I've become really good friends. I'm actually in his collection. Um, he commissioned a painting from me a while ago. Um, Amanda Nunez, same thing. I, I, I donated a painting to her. Um, I painted her portrait. Uh, you know, I think all of us, really, any of us that have been together, Chuck Liddell, I mean, like these people, we've been together for over a decade. So, um, and when you see these fighters from the beginning and to the end sometimes, their entire career within the UFC, we all feel so like family because, you know, to fight, I couldn't, it's, fucking hard. It's like some serious work. So we're really there for them before they walk out. And then after, you know, we're the last ones, we high five them. So I really become close to a lot of them. That's interesting too. I was always wondering, cause I, I see you guys up on the stage there all the time with the muck for the way ins and everything else. So I was wondering if there's more than just a hi, how are you type of a thing. So, uh, and the fighters too. I mean, a lot of fighters, a lot of people don't realize like you, whenever I talk to people, they think like, Oh, they're these mean, you know, tough people, which I mean, yeah, to a degree they are, they're in a cage fighting, but the, a lot of the fighters have to be a, really the nicest, sweetest people there are around. Have you gathered that as well from your time? Yeah. I mean, and that's what people have to understand. It's, I mean, after you can see someone and Connor is a great example because for him to get ready for a fight, they create, it's amazing. And this is what makes the spectacle. And we're like, Ooh, I can't wait to see this fight because there's so much drama. But after every fight, they're handshaking and they're hugging and they're like, good game. Because sometimes it takes a certain, you know, way of thinking to get into it. They're all, what it takes to be a fighter, the discipline it takes, the strength, the stamina, the talent, like the talent, it's, it's extraordinary. And somebody that has all of those characteristics, they can't not be incredible people as well. Um, you know, to have that drive really just steps you apart, you know, at, in the sport. So, um, 99.9% .9 in my opinion have been incredible. Definitely. I really enjoy talking to all the fighters as well. A lot of great people out there. And, uh, you know, let's talk a little bit with the female uh, mixed martial artists as well. I'm going to kind of put you on the spot here a little bit. Uh, we know that uh, a lot of the female fighters are very good looking ladies. Of course, they're in fantastic shape. Is there a fighter out there that you think, you know, this girl would make a very good ring girl if she wanted to do it? Um, let me think. Let me I, I, it it was sure. a hard question. I know I put you on the spot there. Um, let me think. Rose. Really? incredible. But she would have to go in and just shave head though and like own it. Like that. I think that, um, Rhonda, when she was in the, when she was still here, she would have been a good one. Um, Misha Tate, Gina Carano, even though she's no longer fighting, but now she's acting in our favorite show. Is she really? Um, Mandalorian. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Is she really in the Mandalorian? Don't ruin it. I didn't get the only three episodes in. <laughs> It's not, it's, it's not that much of a spoiler, but you'll see her. She, she has a big role in it. I don't know. I, I thought you might have gotten that episode. Um, anyway, uh, you know, they're all so beautiful. I could list them all. There are a lot of good looking girls and there's also a lot of good looking girls in your uh, old job that you had that uh, we were talking before we came on air here and did this. So to catch everybody up here, um, the shows we were mentioning earlier was a uh, Jubilee in Las Vegas and X Burles. I actually uh, attended the X Burles show when I was 18 years old. The uh, 2011 was the year. Brittany, you were actually working there then. Uh, so just tell everybody though a little bit about the show and what it was like to, to do that job. Um, yeah, well, X, I think I was there. Now I'm like still trying to think if I was there. Um, X Burlesque is, it's kind of, um, it's a burlesque show. It consisted of, I think we had six girls. 
Um, so I was one of six, and it was an hour-long show. We had a comedian in the middle, and we did basically, you know, pussycat-style dancing, and it was actually in a theater, and we did quick changes and costumes, and, um, you know, it was – that was probably the funnest time because I was not even 21 and I got to dance with these girls that were way in their mid to late twenties. So I'm just like this young girl, like just trying to figure out who I am in my early twenties or trying to even get to my twenties and I'm dancing and dressing up and getting makeup and lashes. And I'm really getting to understand, um, pressure and understand, you know, being, cause being on stage isn't, you know, it's not easy. It's, 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 but it's, it's taught me so much. So at that time, I think it was some of, it was such a beautiful way to spend my early twenties. It's like hanging out with the big kids without having to be like a big kid yet. You know, we get to dance and have fun. And, um, really because of my dancing is the reason I'm with UFC. So like, it's all just happens perfectly for a reason. Um, but yeah. So now one of the things you just touched on there a little bit, like the makeup, the wardrobe changes, the dancing, like whenever people think of a show like this, it's like, oh, you're just going out there to see a girl that doesn't have her shirt on dance around a stage. It's more than that. Like, it's an actual choreographed show. Like you, you need to have talent to do something like this. Do you think that people overlook the talent that it takes to, to get up there and do that? I think people that don't see the show overlook the talent. The people who don't know, they will, they will overlook it and they'll have, they'll, people will always say something. But I think an actual, the, an average, you know, a person who has a, can just think capably um, that would come and see a show like that would be like, damn, that's not easy. Those heels are high. They are turning. They are twirling. They're kicking. Like, it's a, it's a whole, um, it's a production. It really is, and the, the show's still going on in Las Vegas. I, I highly recommend it. It's a very good show. Uh, definitely check it out. It's at the Flamingo. And Brittany, I want to draw your attention now to another. Uh, thing you did before becoming a ring girl. Uh, you modeled in a pretty famous magazine. People may have heard of it. It's called Playboy. It's a pretty big deal, I'm sure. Uh, I don't know now at the new day and age, but like when I was 13 years old, every little boy that was 13 years old needed to run to a bookstore and try to get a Playboy magazine out of a plastic covering. Uh, but <laughs> I have to ask you about that. It had to be an interesting experience going through something like that because it was uh, you know, one of the hottest things around for the longest time. Yeah, you know, um, it's a great story. I, I Again, I was really young, so to be a part of something so big, so young, it was really, really cool. I'm wondering how I feel about doing it now. I think it would probably I'll equally be as fun, but in its own different way. Um, there was a lot of nerves attached to it. I had to, I remember uh, Steve Shaw, which was my photographer, he had to open a bottle of champagne and it was like 10 a.m. Like, he was like, we got to get her some champagne to loosen her up because I was so nervous because you get, you know, I was used to doing photo shoots before, but on a shoot like that, you have a staff of maybe 20 people working on this shoot. And you're all, and everyone's poking at you and you're not lotioning yourself. Like you don't do anything. You just stand there and then just let them come and do whatever they poke and pride. And, um, but it was really cool. And, uh, you know, Playboy treated me very well. Um, I did a beautiful press tour after, which was super fun. Um, I got to go to the big news stations and really, you know, make it something big. And UFC was 100% supportive and on board, and the rest is history. So now, when you did this, did you have like, did you get to go out to the Playboy Mansion and meet Hugh Hefner and do all of that, or is this all done somewhere else? Um, I didn't. I never met Hugh Hefner. I never went to the Playboy Mansion. I think that I was invited, but I don't. I, I never went for you know whatever reason. I, scheduling or something it wasn't I wasn't a, a playmate per se they it was, we were more like specialty covers Ariani as well so but um we were still always invited I just never you know felt the need to go and now aside from modeling you are a very talented artist and anyone that follows you on any social media would know that and I saw the photo the other day as I hear the dogs barking behind you there shout out to the dogs um, but you had a really nice winter photo that was just up the other day. Uh, like I said, very talented artist. But before we actually get into that, I wanted to ask kind of how you got started with uh, the whole painting thing because it wasn't exactly, a, I guess, a exciting thing that happened because you were in a serious car accident that led to you getting the painting, correct? Yes. Um, you know, I, like I had mentioned before, I was a professional dancer, danced in the big Vegas shows, um, you know, was with talent agencies. 
So I was hit by a car when I was 21 years old and I fractured my pelvis in three places, which was made me unable to dance or walk really uh, for three months. And in that three month period, because, you know, I'm still a very creative person, um, I just had to try to fill my days with stuff that was more interesting than sitting and watching TV, you know, and I didn't want to be like that and couldn't work out, couldn't do anything. So I just started to paint and just paint for fun. And, to, um, you know, I quickly noticed how fast I was picking up this passion that I was developing and how I was a little bit better than I thought I was going to be. And every time I did more, I was better and better. And, and by the way, this goes for anybody that wants to do anything. This isn't just my story. If you do something every day, you'll get better at it for sure. So, um, I became to a point where when I was able to walk again and I was really kind of able to pick things back up, I just, my passion for dancing had really just dwindled so fast in the, that industry. So, um, and because of circumstances, I just totally flipped it and I wanted to move to LA and go to art school. Like I just wanted a different life and, and I was so excited about this passion and like I was not going into work just because I wanted to paint. Like I was making up all these excuses, not UFC. I was always doing that stuff. But um, my other job I had, I was like a cocktail waitress. So I was like, hey, I'm not feeling well, just so I can like be home and paint all night. Like it was, became like an actual obsession. So it was really a blessing that car accident, you know, now. Um, and yeah, I'm painting and I, you know, do a lot of, a majority of my work is through art. And now your artwork too, it's it's very beautiful. And there's a lot of colors. It's very vibrant. Is that something that, like, did you learn that? Or is that just kind of like how your personality was and that you wanted to produce this type of artwork? Just kind of tell everybody about your artwork and kind of how you got into these loud, vibrant paintings. Um, You know, my, my mother says, she goes, this is what your insides look like. That's what she says about my art. And so I think that means that this is really something internally, how I like to see the world and I love color. I've always loved color. Um, I don't really wear a lot of color, but I do really enjoy painting with it. Um, when I was in art school, I would always try to use brighter tones in class. That wasn't necessarily what um, you know the teacher was teaching at the time. So I've always kind of had that um, inkling that I wanted to work in this um, this realm of, I guess, color. So I love doing bright, beautiful portraits that are different colors and I love doing bright beautiful abstracts with different textures and color and um but I also you know I I'll do a little bit where it's like monochromatic so it's black white and gray but um not too much but yeah and you've done some great uh artworks for some of the fighters and I think you mentioned this in the beginning but we could touch base on just a little bit more now Conor McGregor bought one of your paintings that you did on him right uh, yes, Conor McGregor uh, commissioned me to paint his portrait um, it was actually one of my favorite portraits that I've ever done, thank God. <laughs> um, and it's in Ireland in his gym. Oh, wow, look at that. So, oh, well, I, I'm sure that we've probably seen, everyone sees all the photos of uh, Connor working out on his Instagram, so I'm sure everybody's uh, familiar with the photo, and I'll, I'll actually put it up on the screen for everybody to see as well. Uh, but, Brittany, if it's okay with you, I want to actually go back to modeling just for one little second. I actually wanted to touch on something else that you referenced at the beginning, there's no seasons, like you said. You guys have to stay in great shape all year round, which has to be tough. Just tell everybody about like just how hard it is to number one to do that, and then I mean, talk about your diet. You have to be in such a strict diet, 365 days a year. Yeah. Well, um, you know, I don't eat meat, so that helps a lot. Um, Team vegan. I'm I'm partially vegan, so I I usually eat meat around dinner time, whatever my mom makes. But during the day, it's all plant based, uh, a lot of fruits, vegetables, stuff like that. Yeah, so I like to call it a vega pescatarian. So I'll eat fish every once in a while. Uh, basically, at home, I'm all vegan. Um, I, I won't. I'm not too picky. Like if my friends, if we go out and they would have something with cheese or butter, I'm not going to be like, no, you know you know, grilled vegetables and olive oil, like I'm, I'll, I'll um, indulge myself. But, um, you know, that really helps when you have a solid diet because I don't really, your body can't gain weight if you're not giving it stuff to gain weight. Um, I love to work out. I think it's just such an important component to just my mental state. Um, I love my Peloton bike, especially in our world doing indoor workouts. So I've really grown to love like 
YouTube classes and my Peloton bike and just, you know, really the clean eating is, is that's key. And how about booze? Do you like to drink too or is uh, <laughs> that, that eliminate it? No, no, I do like to drink. Um, so red wine, I love. I try when I drink red wine, if I can help it, to get like an organic red wine, something that maybe has less sugar in it. Um, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, alcohol is alcohol. Um, I love, you know, skinny margaritas. And I like to indulge, for sure. Sometimes too much. Well, uh, again, that's a lot of hard work just to keep your body in that type of shape all year round. And of course, you guys, again, like I said before, you guys do a fantastic job. All those ring girls, you guys look great all year round. And I'm sure everybody out there wants to know what it would take to date a UFC ring girl. So let's play a little game here. We're going to ask Brittany some, uh, some things that she looks for in a guy. So, Brittany, let's start with characteristics. Is there something that stands out to you whenever you meet a guy? Um, I love a sense of humor. I, I love someone who can get my jokes and uh, to also tell me jokes. I, you know, I really enjoy laughing and giggling and having like banter. So how about height? And a lot of girls say they don't want to date guys that are shorter than this. Is height a concern for you? Um, it's not the only thing, but it is, I, I, but I'm not very tall, so it's okay. I'm only five, five. So you really don't have to be, you know, much to be taller than me. <laughs> so now if a guy's going to take you out on a date, is there, is there a proper place that he should take you out on a first date? Do you have a preference? Um, on a first date, probably just like a really great restaurant with good wine and like a good atmosphere with cool, you know what I mean? Just like a cool vibe, nothing too fancy or stuffy, but, um, you know, something that's thoughtful and just a, a good place, good cocktails. Now, should the guy be wearing nice clothing or are people that like to wear sweatpants and hoodies uh, eliminated from this conversation? He should definitely be in nice clothing, pants, nice shoes. Yeah. And now how about the big one as, a, as of late, abs versus dad bod? Abs. <laughs> abs, and then how about... I work uh, with UFC, I mean, of course. Yeah, yeah no, you guys, you, you see a lot of abs whenever you guys are around, I'm sure, with the guys that you see. Uh, how about, uh, last thing here, is there any type of, like, a key to your heart? Like, you a sucker for anything, like uh, jewelry, chocolate, uh, wine, of course. Is there anything that's uh, an automatic key to Brittany Palmer's heart? Oh, man, you know, it's really just about, like, your personality. I, that's all of that other stuff. I've had it, you know, I've, we've had all of these flowers and chocolates, and that they're very sweet, and the gesture is nice, but really just having, like, an endearing, kind soul is so important, you know, it just makes me want to be better, and um, it's, it's very attractive, and I think most girls will agree. And now for all the guys out there that are sitting there like, ooh, I might have a shot here. We'd have to tell you, Brittany has a boyfriend. So, Brittany, go ahead and give your boyfriend a shout out because he's a, a talented <laughs> artist as well. I see uh, see all the photos on his Instagram as well. Oh, Gregory, so he's, he's in here somewhere. He's uh, been together a while now. He's also an artist. Um, you guys will love his art. Check it out. <laughs> All right, Brittany, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, before you roll out, we have two other things. The first thing I want, though, uh, if you could go ahead, for everybody that's out there that that wants to uh, see more of the stuff that you're doing behind the scenes with the UFC and anyone that's interested in your artwork, you do a great job on your social media accounts of posting all that. So first, go ahead and uh, plug your social media so people know where to find you. All right, so you can follow me at Brittany Palmer, um, and that's just for my every day-to-day -day kind of blog um, then Brittany Palmer Art, which houses most of my art content um, or anything very like creative, um, their studio time and etc. Uh, Facebook is Brittany Palmer Official, and then my website is BrittanyPalmer.com. You know, I'm really happy you said the Brittany Palmer Official thing because I was actually going to tell people if you Google Brittany's name, there's like a little Facebook icon. If you click on it, it's some random ass person. So God bless that lady because she must get messages from people that she has no idea who the hell they even are. <laughs> But Brittany, the other thing too, uh, I have to ask in the last days of year, 2020, 2021, new year right around the corner. Do you have any big plans you'd like to share with everybody? Uh, well, for the new year, so I'm actually really excited. I have been asked by Tops, which is the baseball trading card. They also trade other things other than baseball cards. Um, I will be one of their artists for a project they have next year. Um, it's all the details are coming very soon, but I will be painting baseball cards. So I'm really excited to be a part of their new project and I can't wait to really discuss more about it and 
the players and everything else. All right, awesome. Brittany, congratulations on that. We're looking forward to seeing that. Again, go to Brittany's social media accounts. You could uh, see all the, the great artwork that she does, and you'll be able to see a lot of that, what she's doing there with Tops in the new year. Um, but again, Brittany, great as always. Uh, looking forward to seeing you in more UFC events here in 2021. Appreciate the time. And as always, guys, before I roll out, I tell everybody all the time, subscribe to the YouTube channel. You'll see more interviews just like this. And remember to keep going to my MMA news to check out all of our great content as well. See you later, everybody.